what are the best ETFs for providing exceptional growth, but at the same time can help minimize the downside volatility of your portfolio. I've been a very big fan of high income ETFs like covered call ETFs, which use a covered call strategy on their underlying holdings to collect premium income, which is then distributed to investors in the form of a dividend yield that's usually upwards of 10 to 12%. These ETFs provide a steady flow of cash for income investors and retirees and help facilitate consistent dollar cost averaging, which is amazing. And they help protect your portfolio thanks to their high dividend yield that acts as a perfect counterweight to a dropping stock price. Now, the overall purpose of these investments is to capture the least amount of market volatility by using options to generate the dividend yield, giving income investors and conservative investors a dream instrument to park their cash. The lower the beta value of an investment, the more suitable it is. But unfortunately, they're not perfect and they're not for everyone. I've mentioned time and time again that these investments have two major flaws. For one, they always leave the downside volatility completely open and vulnerable, but they limit the upside potential through their covered call strategy. And a direct consequence of this is the limited ability to recover the net asset value after a major drop has occurred. Now, I will be going through this in detail in another video because NAV depletion is the number one thing you want to avoid with high income investments. And I've always said that a fund's downside volatility should not significantly exceed its capital appreciation ability. And instead, it's best for it to be as close to each other as possible. On top of that, these investments are not tax efficient. The income that they generate is considered non-qualified, which is taxed as regular income. So not only is your upside potential limited thanks to the covered calls, but your total return is also taking a hit thanks to high taxation. So the total return you're seeing on paper is not what you're actually getting at the end of the day. Now, if you're investing in a tax deferred account like a Roth IRA, then you wouldn't have to worry about this. But it is important to remember that Roth IRAs are not available to everyone and they do have annual contribution limits. The income limit is currently $160,000 Maggie, which is modified adjusted gross income per person per year, so not everyone is eligible. And international investors can be subject to another layer of taxation due to international laws with the United States, like myself, which can put a heavy drag on the total return. So the question now is, is there something better? An investment that could provide the same downside risk mitigation and overall total return without the heavy tax burden that will eat into your profits? Well, yes, there is. Interestingly enough, there's an ETF that is not only able to minimize the downside volatility better than most defensive ETFs and covered call ETFs that I've seen, but it is also able to capitalize on growth opportunities much better than the most popular covered call ETFs in the market, like JEPI and SPYI. And this brings me to HELO, which is the JP Morgan Hedged Equity Laddered Overlay ETF. I reviewed this ETF a few months ago, but it was too early to even get a general idea of the fund's performance Plus, I did promise to revisit once there was more data to analyze. Now, the fund has been out for a little over three months, and during this time frame, we have seen a pretty heavy downward trend followed by a very strong upward trend. So we can finally see how effective the CTF is in varying market environments. And I have to say, its performance is much better than I expected. Its total returns are better than JEPI and SBYI, but most importantly, its ability to mitigate downside volatility is even better, which is absolutely amazing. And it is all thanks to its complex option strategy, hence the fund's name, which we will go through in just a second. Now, before we continue, let's run through the fundamentals of this ETF so you can get a better understanding. This ETF is very new and it was established on September 28th, 2023. The fund currently has over $200 million of assets under management, which is more than three times the AUM from just two months ago, so it has an incredible rate of growth. Now, given the fund's recent inception, there really isn't much technicals to look into like beta, but given the fund's performance, I assume it is well below 0.6, similar to JEPI, if not better. The fund has an expense ratio of 0.5%, which is a little bit on the higher end. Now, I may have lost you a little bit on the high expense ratio, but remember that all high income ETFs have relatively high expense ratios, but this ETF is able to not only match, but exceed the total returns of those high income ETFs so far. Now, the reason for this high expense ratio is all due to its underlying strategy, which we'll get to in just a second. Since inception, comparing it side by side with the S&P 500, JEPI, and SPYI, you can see a very impressive result. 
Kilo has outperformed both ETFs, returning 5.6% as opposed to SPYI, which has returned 4.6%, and JEPI, which has returned 5.3%. And remember, this is including JEPI and SPYI's massive dividend yield of 9 and 12% respectively. But what really caught my attention is this section right here. During the downtrend from the beginning of October, the fund outperformed both JEPI and SPYI by more than 1%. But during the uptrend immediately afterwards, the fund consistently sat above the other two by 2%, which clearly shows the fund's ability to minimize downside and also maximize the upside. From October 11th to October 27th, the markets took a very heavy downturn, with the S&P 500 losing around 6% and the Nasdaq 100 losing around 7%. And during this time frame, both JEPI and SPYI lost a total of around 4.5%. Hilo was amongst the very few ETFs that was able to outperform every single one of these. And again, the fund is doing this without the use of a dividend yield, which means it's an extremely tax efficient way to minimize downside volatility. Many of you may be wondering why not simply invest in a value ETF that is known to be a very defensive and great conservative investment. Well, this is strictly because of the cyclical nature of the markets. 2023 and 2022 is a perfect example because this past year, tech stocks took over with the Magnificent 7 returning majority of the Nasdaq 100 and the S&P 500's returns. But value sectors and ETFs heavily underperformed. And sure, you were able to mitigate downside risk in 2022, but you completely missed out on everything in 2023. So now the question is, is it really worth missing out on the potential outperformance of those major technology companies? I simply don't think that it is. I think no matter what, exposure to these large cap technology companies is essential for long-term investing. And that is exactly what the CTF does, but in a very risk averse way. So let's get to the main question. How does this ETF work? Taking a look at the fund's prospectus, it states that Hilo actively manages a large cap US equity portfolio with a laddered options overlay that seeks to provide downside protection while foregoing some upside potential. The fund aims for enhanced risk adjusted returns over a full market cycle with lower volatility than traditional equity strategies. Okay, I know that was quite a lot, but there's two key things to focus on the holdings, and the laddered options overlay. To begin, one very important detail that I missed before is how the fund's holdings compare to the S&P 500. The fund's asset allocation is identical to the S&P 500. However, you can see that the fund only holds 179 individual stocks as opposed to 500. And I feel that with fewer individual holdings, the fund has a better ability to appreciate in value because it won't suffer from over diversification, which would put a heavy drag on its growth potential. And you can actually see this with funds like OEF, which invests in the top 100 stocks within the S&P 500. This ETF has a much better ability to appreciate in value compared to the S&P 500. So now what does laddered options overlay mean? Let's break down the description piece by piece so you can get a better understanding because I swear it's not as complex as it sounds. So first, the fund seeks capital appreciation by investing in large cap US stocks, as mentioned. But then the fund looks to provide continuous market hedge by using a put spread collar. A put spread collar is made up of two components the put spread, and then the collar. A put spread is when an investor buys a put option and then simultaneously sells a put option. And these put options have different strike prices. So what this fund does is it purchases a put option that is out of the money and then sells a put option that is further out of the money. So for example, if the S&P 500 sits at $400, a put spread could be buying a put option at a strike price of $390 and then selling a put option at a strike price of $380. Now, I'm sure you're wondering, what is the significance of this strategy? You see, when you buy a put option, you're essentially taking a short position. This put option will increase in value if the underlying stock drops in value. That is why buying puts is used as a hedging tactic. However, there is a major problem. Purchasing a put option can be quite expensive. And depending on how close to the money you are, the put option becomes more and more expensive. Also, if the market rallies in an upward trend, your losses from purchasing the put options will be equal to the total price you pay. So over time, you lose a lot of money. So how can you fix this problem? This is where the first solution comes in, which is the put spread. So by selling an additional put option that is further out of the money, you receive a premium, which is then used to fund the purchase of the put option. So you're still getting the hedging benefits of purchasing a put option, but you're doing so at a much cheaper price. Granted, the price change of the put spread will not be as much as the individual put option. So now let's move on to the collar. 
You see, even if you're doing a put spread, you're still going to have to pay money out of your own pocket to fund the purchase. And unless the underlying stock drops in value, you're going to lose a lot of money in the long run. However, this fund fixes that problem by selling a call option as well. Just like a covered call ETF, when you sell a call option, you receive a premium. So this fund is using both the premium from selling the put option and the premium from selling the call option to fund the purchase of the put option. Or in simple terms, the premium received from the call option is funding the purchase of the put spread. Now here's the big twist, laddered options overlay. So what this fund is doing is purchasing these put spreads, but repeating it three times over multiple three month periods staggered one month apart. So for example, if my put spread expires in January, then the second spread will expire in February and the third spread will expire in March. And what this does is essentially ensure that the hedges do not all expire simultaneously and instead overlap each other, providing continuous protection, which is extremely important. And this is why the fund has been able to outperform so significantly without the use of a dividend yield. So it's clear now that the covered calls fully fund the purchase of the put spreads because the fund practically has no dividend yield. There's no excess income that can be distributed to investors, which was unclear the first time I reviewed the ETF. This does, however, mean that the fund is limiting its upside potential with its covered call, just like any other covered call ETF. Now, there's also another major detail. The fund is only using a small portion of its assets for this laddered put spread caller. A large majority of their assets are invested in large cap US stocks that will be able to significantly appreciate in value. Overall, I feel that the CTF has a very specific purpose. It is great for conservative investors who want that exposure to the market without exposure to 100% of the downside volatility. On top of that, strictly based on its performance, it is providing the same results as JEPI and SPYI, but in a much more tax efficient manner. So for high earners who exceed the eligibility of a Roth IRA and international investors, if you want exposure to the market, but you are more on the conservative side, this could be a perfect investment. Now, I know that you guys are usually curious whether or not I'm investing in these ETFs myself. And remember that my goals will be different from your goals. And currently I am focusing on maximizing the growth of my portfolio. So this ETF is not something that I will be investing in. Now, on a side note, I've been thinking about which other high income ETF this could be the perfect complement to, and I'm starting to zero in on SVOL. Now, I do wanna hear your opinions regarding this in the comment section down below, so let me know. Now, I'm very curious to see the long-term results of this ETF, but given the fantastic short-term performance, I think we have a very interesting investment strategy. And that is all for this one. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit that thumbs up button for the YouTube algorithm. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in my next one.